Okay, everyone. So today we're going to be talking about equine herpes virus um, and how it affects the horses. So let me share the screen. So in, uh, when we have like vaccines and the way that people call this disease is generally um, rhino pneumonitis. So uh, when talking about vaccines, some people say, you know, flu and rhino. So that's generally, so that is in reference to the uh, respiratory disease that herpes virus uh, produces. So we need to understand if you guys know anything about herpes virus in humans, we need to like understand that herpes virus has kind of worked the same in multiple species so it's something to to um, keep in mind okay so it is also called rhino pneumonitis rhino has to do with the respiratory system so nose and pneumo has to do with uh, lungs nidus inflammation and it's generally seen in young horses okay so the red we're talking about the respiratory disease generally seen in young horses uh, we have the equine herpes virus type 1 and type 4 are the most common among horses. Type 4, and this I'm going to say, there's, we're going to say this throughout the, the, the slides, but I'm going to go ahead and say this. Type 4 generally causes mild respiratory disease, much more mild than influenza. Equine herpes virus 1 is going to cause uh, inf respiratory disease also, a little bit more severe than herpes virus type 4 but can also cause other diseases such as abortion, abortion in the pregnant mare. It can cause uh, neurologic disease and it can cause other diseases. Okay, so this is the difference that you have to understand between the two. So both cause respiratory disease. Four is a little bit more mild than one. One can also, because it has affinity to a variety of other cells, can also cause the neurologic disease, can also cause abortion. Most of this, the horses are exposed by the virus by, by two years of age, okay? So the fact is these viruses uh, infect horses and then they go latent in the horse's um, body, sometimes in the trigeminal nerve, which is the uh, nerve gang the ganglia, which is right here behind the ear. Uh, it's trigeminal nerve is one of the 12 cranial nerves. And... Uh, these horses are latent and when some stress happens, they start to shed the virus again. And at which point younger horses get exposed to the virus and they get the disease. Okay, so the majority of these cases are going to run a mild respiratory disease. The disease is acute. Treatment is going to be palliative with uh, benamine, fluids if needed, uh, antibiotic if needed, uh, soft food, etc. And prognosis is very favorable for these uh, respiratory diseases. Natural transmission is going to happen by contact with another horse that is sharing, that is uh, shedding the disease, or the secretion such as fomites uh, sharing the same um, bucket, tech, etc. So there is multiple uh, types of herpes virus that affect that affect horses of equine herpes viruses. The most important ones that affect horses are one and four. There are reports of type two and five being seen, but they also cause mild respiratory disease. The one and four are the most important ones of the ones that affect horses. They are, um, the, they're all herpes viruses, but different types cause a little bit different disease. So this is what is important for you guys to understand is that equine herpes virus one is going to affect uh, different cells. They infect the respiratory epithelial cells, endothelial cells, so endothelial cells, endothelial cells are cells inside uh, blood vessels so wherever those cells are damaged whatever organ we're talking about is the, the organ that is going to be damaged so if it is in the pregnant uterus we're going to have uh, abortion if it is in the brain we're going to have uh, neurologic disease neuronal cells so uh, neural so nervous system also and lymphoid cells uh, herpes virus 4 is more commonly isolated from uh, mild respiratory diseases, and herpes virus 1 is a little bit more virulent, causes more severe disease, and will cause abortion, neurological disorders. If the mare, it can cause actually uh, neonatal death if uh, that horse 
is born and the mare is shedding herpes virus type one uh, at the time that the foal is born and she and he doesn't have any antibodies against it, it can actually cause death. Uh, it can cause ocular disease, disease of the eye, etc. They're both enveloped. They're env herpes viruses are enveloped R viruses, which makes them um, susceptible to be killed by common disinfectants such as, you know, bleach or soap or chlorhexidine, etc. The main reservoir for these viruses is the latently infected horse. So these viruses, when they affect the horse, the horse gets sick for a while and immediately the, uh, about 70% of horses are going to become latently infected. This horse, these viruses hide somewhere in the body and those are the horses that maintain the disease in the environment because every once in a while they start to shed the virus again, most of the times without even a clinical sign. And what happens is horses that become susceptible, they come in con that, that are susceptible, they come in contact with these horses that are currently shedding the virus and they can get sick then if they don't have a good immune uh, immunity uh, built up for this particular virus. Uh, it can live in the environment for several days. Uh, most adult horses by this time have already been exposed to equine herpes viruses. Um, the foals generally are going to acquire the virus from the mare that may be shedding this virus symptomatically uh, during the time um, when the foals are four, five, six months of age, they may develop a little respiratory disease. And that's the time when the foal uh, is more stressed and he is being weaned as well. So that's very stressed, stressful. And that's also when the antibodies that he has um, drunk from the colostrum is going to be waning down. So it's the time that you have to start vaccinating these foals for different diseases, but that's when. So if there is a horse around that is shedding the virus at the time due to stress or any other thing, those foals can get sick from that, okay? Um, like I said, more widespread uh, among young horses, and then we can have outbreaks in uh, horses that are up to two, three years of age from weaning. We can also have outbreaks of these viruses um, in training facilities or in race tracks or in horse shows because it's multiple horses coming from different backgrounds. And most importantly, some of them uh, may have good immunity against the viruses, but because of the stress, they may start shedding the virus, even if they themselves don't get sick they may start shedding the virus without any clinical signs. That's what we call subclinical horses, and they may be shedding the virus and other horses that are more susceptible can become sick. So that's why I have here risk factors for outbreaks, overcrowding, it's because horses are stressed when they're overcrowded, when they have to fight for food, when they have to fight for space, they have to fight for water, they become stressed. And this, as you get stressed, you start to shed the virus again. This is the same with humans. Humans start, if they have herpes virus, say like the type one, the, I think it's called the herpes virus simplex, I guess is the type one that, is to, that causes cold sores in the mouth. When your immune system goes down, cold sores on the mouth, okay? Um, heavy parasite burden, poor nutritional state, climatic extremes, which is something that happens in Kentucky all the time, okay? One day is, 75 degrees and that night is 25 degrees. So that happens in Kentucky all the time. And this stresses horses out and they can start to shed the virus. Concurrent disease, the intermingling of horses from different uh, social groups. So like when they start mixing horses and they get stressed, that can uh, be a problem too. It's very contagious, many horses can get. So for example, you uh, introduce a new horse you bring a new horse, how do you prevent the spread in your facility? Say you only have horses that are adult, heavily vaccinated in your facility, you bring in a young horse and that horse starts to have a respiratory disease with uh, some discharge from the nose. Now that horse is probably having herpes virus. So you have to keep the horse separated and quarantined for you know two weeks until they get over the disease before introducing them to the herd in case you have a horse in the herd that uh, is susceptible, is not well vaccinated, or has some sort of Cushing's, 
which uh, decreases, as we talked about, has too much cortisol, so increases immu decreases immunity, increases the chance of this horse getting sick, etc. But other than that, if the horse that is um, having quite possibly a herpes virus respiratory disease is introduced to a herd of healthy, adult, well-vaccinated horses, it's unlikely that those horses would get sick. Does that make sense? Uh, so he may ha be having a disease, maybe shedding the disease from, you know, the virus from his nose, but it's unlikely that the other adult horses in the facility, if they are free of stress, now if they're also traveling and also uh, being stressed, they may get sick too, okay? But it is uh, unlikely that just this mild respiratory disease would happen to this adult, low stress, well vaccinated horses, okay? Latency, it is what's important. One of the most important things about herpes viruses is because as soon as the individual gets infected, latency develops right then. Uh, the, large, the large majority of recovered horses are going to become uh, latently infected. They, uh, this virus is just hide in the T lymphocytes uh, and in the trigeminal ganglia. The trigeminal ganglia, like I said, is one of the trigeminal nerve is one of the facial nerves. Uh, so the 12 cranial nerves, I mean, of facial cranial nerves. And as I said, so close to the nose, so close to the uh, to the area that it's very quickly to go from that nerve to start shedding again, okay? Periodically, latently infected horses are going to activate the virus and they're going to start shedding the virus even if they themselves don't show signs of the disease, but they can infect susceptible horses. Uh, reactivation is going to occur after anything that causes stress, such as transport, rehousing, weaning, inclement weather, surgery, steroids administration, etc. Reactivation a lot of the times is not accompanied by respiratory clinical signs. Um, there is a, a, some, some argument about closed population of horses and how they are generally not going to have herpes viruses and because they're closed, so say it's five horses that never leave the property, they're a closed population, they never change anything about them. Sure, they most likely will not be shedding the virus and becoming sick with the virus, because they are um, not coming in contact with new horses, for example. However, the weather, there's other stresses that actually can cause the virus to start to, um, to come out of latency, such as weather, too hot, horses hate horse, uh, horses hate hot weather a lot of the times, uh, inclement weather, such as what happens in Kentucky all the time. So it's something all uh, to think about. Um, Herpes virus one, when this was when some sort of stress happens, it can get reactivated uh, from latency. And if the mare is pregnant, it can actually cause uh, abortion, even if it's not causing respiratory disease. It can just go cause abortion. What happens in this horse, these mares don't even get sick. They just slip the foe and they continue to eat. They don't even know because they there is no clinical signs for them. Okay, so they um there, there is uh, vasculitis that happens because the viruses are going to infect the endothelial cells in the uterus, um, but they don't even have clinical signs. Now, then you have other animals that are together, maybe a, a foal that hasn't drunk a lot of colostrum from the mare in the same field, and then uh, he goes and sniffs the, uh, the aborted fetus, and they can, he can get sick from that. But that, again, um, Abortion is generally caused by herpes virus type one, not type four, okay? This is just a schematics of a horse gets infected, uh, latency is going to happen, uh, there's gonna be nasal shedding of the virus, it's going to recruit new, uh, it's going to infect younger susceptible horses, it is going to uh, recruit more horses, horses are going to go latently infected again, they're going to maintain uh, the virus in society by be in society in the environment by becoming latently infected. Uh, the pathogenesis: this virus is replicating the upper respiratory tract. Uh, equine herpes virus one, like I said, is more aggressive than type four and also infects endothelial cells. And uh, um, 
when their viremia is going to happen. So viremia is when the viruses are uh, replicating in the blood circulation. And uh, when viremia is happening, just so you guys know, when viremia or bacteremia is happening is when fever is generally happening, is when uh, that animal is sicker than normal, okay, or the sicker than That's when generally the signs of disease are happening is when viremia is happening because fever, not feeling well, this is generally, and, and sometimes the virus shedding continues to happen most times, even when viremia is already over, okay? Uh, most isolates of the herpes virus type 4 have very low affinity for endothelial cells. They don't establish a very strong viremia, and therefore they don't cause abortion or neurological disease because they just remain in the respiratory tract. They don't even reach uh, the blood circulation. Okay, that's why their disease is very mild. Equine herpes virus one can get to the uterus and uh, central nervous system causing what we call vasculitis and that can lead to abortion. It's generally late term abortion. That's why I said a mare may abort and where in fields where other foes are there and they may get sick then. Uh, respiratory disease that may have started with herpes virus may predispose horses uh, to secondary bacterial infection leading to bacterial pneumonia. Okay, so that's with any respiratory disease. Uh, so the clinical signs, like I said, is going to be mild for herpes virus type 4, mild respiratory disease may lead to secondary bacterial pneumonia. So we're going to talk about depression, depression, anorexia. We, we may have, we're going to have fever. They can have some uh, nasal discharge, ocular discharge. There is uh, communication between the eye and the nose. Older animals may be very mild. They may still get like nasal discharge, like very fluidy and transparent uh, nasal discharge. So that may happen but they may not even get fever, okay? Herpes virus type one, very, when they cause respiratory disease, that is a more severe one. They generally cause a lot of um, abortion in pregnant mares and, and there is a mutated herpes virus type one that actually causes uh, neurologic disease. You guys have heard about it, equine herpes virus uh, neuropathy. Um, and what happens, there is also uh, even the wild type, which is the equine herpes virus type 1, just it in itself can actually cause neurologic disease. The incubation period is a little bit faster, can be up to 10 days, as opposed to, say, influenza, which is 24 to 48 hours incubation period. For herpes virus, it's a little bit slower. So up to 10 days uh, as compared, say, for example, to influenza. Unlike influenza, also cough is not the main clinical sign. So we're talking about uh, nasal discharge, we're talking about fever, but not necessarily that cough that we see for influenza. Now, a lot of the times horses cough because the environment they're in is very um, dirty, it's very dusty, it is, doesn't have good air circulation, so they may be coughing because of that. Just a picture showing what... Um, what a serous nasal discharge looks like. And this is just a graph showing to you what uh, vaccination happened when the vaccine was first developed multiple years ago in the 70s or 80s. Uh, this is abortions for thousands of pregnant mares and the number of pregnant mares in Kentucky. So the abortion, so the number of pregnant mares has increased in Kentucky while the number of abortion has decreased with the, uh, when the vaccination became available. How do we diagnose? Do we have to do virus isolation by, uh, we, if it's an aborted fetus, you get from the fetus, or if it's the discharge, you get from the nose. Um, very difficult to detect the horses that are latently infected because sometimes they are just shedding the virus without any clinical signs. The treatment is going to be Benamine, maybe antibodies, maybe flu. It's going to just depend on the horse and what's going on uh, with them at the time. There is different vaccines that are available. So like I said, for the respiratory disease, 
Uh, there is a flu rhino vaccine, and, and that's part of the risk-based vaccination from the AAEP. And uh, like it's just, you know, a number, it's just part of the re uh, regular respiratory disease vaccines that are done for show horses, race horses, etc. Like I said, in the influenza, USCF and a lot of racetracks require that these horses be vaccinated at least twice a year. So you have to show proof of vaccination for, for flu and rhino. For mares, uh, the, to prevent abortion is a different type of vaccine. It is for herpes virus type 1, but it's a very specific vaccine, which is what we call a high uh, virus load vaccine. So there's a lot more virus uh, particles in the two mLs that you're going to be, be giving for the vaccine than the um, herpes virus respiratory disease that is included with just either herpes virus like monovalent or with flu rhino, or there is all sorts of combo vaccines out there. Um, the, the high virus, the high, what we call high antigenic load vaccine is what is going to be given to mares to prevent abortion. And it's just for herpes virus type one. Uh, one of the vaccines called Numabort, I guess Calvenza, is another one, and these particular diseases, um, these particular vaccines will prevent, if the mare gets into uh, a stressful situation, uh, weather, et cetera, and the, they start to shed the virus again, the vaccine, their, their antibody titer is gonna be so high because of these vaccines that it prevents the uh, vi viremia of the virus going on the blood circulation and getting to the uterus. Uh, equine herpes, or EHM, equine herpes myeloencephalopathy. Uh, it is, like I said, a, a, a different, there is a variant, so there is a mutant equine herpes virus type 1 that uh, has more affinity for neuronal cells, uh, but also the wild type also has affinity for, can cause uh, neurologic disease by infecting the endothelial cells. Uh, there isn't a vaccine specific for the, neuro, uh, the, the neurologic disease for herpes virus, which is, uh, so you, we have to rely on biosecurity. So no sharing of the note, sharing tech, especially when you go to shows, no sharing buckets of water, no nose-to-nose -nose contact, no touching horses and then going and touch your own horse, okay? There is some uh, train of thought that to try to prevent the neurologic disease because the herpes virus type 1 uh, abortion vaccine, so like Calvenza and Numabort, because they cause a higher immune response, uh, there is some thought that maybe vaccinating with them will prevent the neurologic disease, but there is no uh, certainty for that. There is no research showing that that is true, but there is indication maybe or theories that that may happen. Uh, let's see, this is what I say. Uh, yeah, which is the ones here. So I guess Numabort is one and Prodigy is two for abortion. Uh, and then Calvenza, is the other one that may, uh, rhinomune is another one that may uh, prevent the equine herpes virus myeloencephalopathy, which we already said. So how do we manage to prevent this disease? So how do we prevent other than vaccination? Diminish stress. Hopefully your horses are chilled and don't get stressed when the weather goes crazy. Uh, don't mix age groups because like adult horses are very uh, immune, so to speak, and less susceptible to the great majority of the respiratory disease because they just have been around, they have been in contact, they have been vaccinated. They just have a, a more uh, prepared immune response to these things as opposed to younger horses. And it goes, again, like younger horse, I talked about how the, the stress of their lives is because they have been moved into a training facility. They're trained more often. So their stress level is a little higher, which predisposes them to these respiratory diseases. Obviously, cleanliness, quarantine of new horses, isolate sick horses. Um, don't cause stress. So try to not be disrupting the established groups uh, too often. 
some people just like put horses, they mix horses, add new horses, remove other horses, buy new horses and put them anywhere. This is not a way to run a farm, okay? So social groups in horses is very important because they create alliances, they create friendships, and horses need to be uh, put together other than like if you're going to separate by gender, so like mares and geldings, or you need to separate by age and then maintain that group where horses get along well. Now, it's, it's very important for a good manager to realize what well, horses are not getting along well, what well, horses are being beat up, what well, horses are not being allowed to eat, what well, horses are not being allowed to drink, and then manage that social that group and remove horse and end horse that all get along. Don't mix horses, obviously, with pregnant mares because they may shed the virus without even getting uh, any clinical sign and they may cause abortion in these mares if they're not heavily vaccinated. Uh, vaccines for pregnant mares for uh, herpes virus type 1, it's recommended by the AAP to vaccinate by uh, at 5, 7, and 9 months of pregnancy. Some barns vaccinate 3, 5, 7, and 9 months of pregnancy to try to prevent abortion. Don't mix resident group with itinerant group. Itinerant group is a group that goes to shows, races, trail rides, and the resident group is the older horse that just live at the farm. Uh, so don't mix them so you don't introduce a disease to the resident group. So if you have any questions, this is um, like herpes virus is respiratory, neurologic, abortion, and uh, all cause. What you need to know is that type 1 more severe than type 4. Type 4 causes mild respiratory disease. There's vaccines for that. Vaccine is not 100% um, doesn't work 100% to prevent the, the, the animal to actually get the disease. It just limits the shedding of the virus. The disease, when it happens, is a little bit faster than when the animal doesn't have any of the vaccine. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call me or to email me.